Yesterday, I did my weekly run through of online businesses for sale, the ones that just went up for sale, and I went through it and I got to the end of it and then I realized, damn, I didn't even look at the Empire Flippers listings email. I totally forgot about that. So figured I'd go back through and take a look at the new listings that Empire Flippers has. So here's their email. One thing I want to point out that I absolutely love is right in the first few words, it gives the date that the business was created or launched. So we can see it created in April 2017. And if you've seen any of my other videos, you know that I am a kind of I have a strong belief or a strong sense of value to an aged business. Whereas I really don't give much credence or value to a business that was just created a couple of years ago, like 2019. All right, so let's just take a look at these. Uh, created in April 2017, affiliate, display advertising, pet care, 47X, that's the multiple earnings multiple. So this thing at a $378,000 valuation, it's probably earning like seven or $8,000 a month. Uh, April 2017, it's a little younger than I really like, but I have a feeling that's going to be on the old side of this list. So let's open this up though. We'll come back, take a look at this later. 2019. 2018, probably not. 2020, 2020. Now this one's in the technology niche and the technology niche I have to point out is one that I like and I think there's a lot of good opportunities in technology based niches because there's always new words and new topics coming up. Whereas if you're in something that's just kind of evergreen and it's not really changing and the search terms are just the same now as they were 10 years ago and they will be 10 years in the future, it's really hard to rank against that stuff because you've got so many aged sites clogging up the search engines. Whereas with technology, if there's new technology that comes out, you can be on the forefront of it and get your content published right when it's coming out and kind of get solidify your spot at the top. But still 2020, eh, probably not going to be something I'm interested in. Here's another one, uh, Technology Niche 44X, created in April 2016. The WordPress site features content related to tech products. This business is well-aged and drives a high percentage from organic traffic. Let's, uh, let's open that one up and take a further look at it. Lead Gen Display Advertising Home and Automotive, created in 2020 or 2019. Uh, what do they do? transport service related content. So I'm guessing that this has to do with moving. That's why they have home and automotive and they sell moving leads probably. Still, it's gonna to be too young, not too interested in it. Amazon FBA, uh, apparel and accessories, 45X, created in August, 2016. So this is kind of aged. Another Amazon FBA from June, 2015 in the culinary kitchenware. This could be an interesting one. I, I tend to like culinary and kitchenware more than apparel and accessories because apparel and accessories is kind of trend oriented, oriented, whereas culinary and kitchenware is probably not so trend oriented. And when you're selling a product, I think that is, you know, something that you want to consider. Display advertising, culinary, kitchenware, 2019, baking. All right, affiliate technology created in July 2019. The Foresight WordPress based business provides reviews, best of articles. Uh, when I when I see this Foresight WordPress, you know, and don't really care about the WordPress, but I, when I see four sites, I'm kind of dissuaded from that, particularly at ninety nine thousand three hundred dollars, because now I've just kind of bought four little projects. Uh, you know, for a hundred thousand dollars, I'd rather just buy one project. Let's take a look at these here and we'll start with the pet care one. This listing is for a display advertising and affiliate business created in April 2017 in the pet care niche. The WordPress site features informative articles for pet owners. The site has a good div traffic diversity among its top pages. The high earning business has remained competitive within its niche and has experienced significant steady traffic and revenue growth over the past 12 months. This business requires minimal effort from the seller to maintain. Uh, so basically, and we got a blog here, display and ad display advertising and affiliate business. The business earns its income through display advertising 97% and affiliate links 3% top three channels, basically organic. The seller spends around six hours per week on the business, conducting keyword research, writing content, optimizing on-site SEO and updating plugins. 
New content is added to the site on a monthly basis. Most of the content is written by the seller. That's odd. Uh, with occasional articles outsourced to freelance writers. So when I see that, first thing that's kind of going off in my mind is this person certainly spends more than six hours per week, right? If they're writing the content uh, on it, which is this characteristic of basically every business listing online, the owner's absentee, he checks his bank account for one hour a week and doesn't have to do any work. Uh, so generally the seller spends around hours count is typically, I don't want to say fraudulent, but certainly rounded down. And if the seller is writing the content, yeah, that number is much higher. But this could be incredibly, incredibly valuable because if the seller is writing the content, he might have some experience or expertise that he's bringing to the table that you're not going to get with a bunch of generalist written content. And I guess that's a double-edged sword because that means that the content you're buying could be at a very, very high level and it could be very good and very value-added content, which makes this website a value at 378000 but on the flip side, you got to continue that or improve it going forward. So your cost of hiring writers or writing it yourself, uh, that would be the, you know, the value of your own cost, is going to be very high. Uh, and then growth opportunities for the buyer include increasing content production, adding Amazon affiliate links to the site, increasing the number of affiliate links, and building out a monetized email list. Yeah, so with this percentage, 97% display and 3% affiliate, I would first primarily look towards increasing of affiliate products, right? Maybe you can get some deals directly with pet care websites or pet care retailers to promote their products via an affiliate link that's gonna be higher than Amazon. This seems like a very interesting business here and a pretty solid one. I kind of like this one. What's the next one? Technology, uh, asking 87,343, 44X multiple, making 1,900 dollars a month. This listing is for display advertising to Amazon Associates, a business created in April 2016 in the technology niche. The WordPress site features content related to tech products. This business is well-aged and drives a high percentage of organic traffic. 61% comes through Mediavine and 39% through Amazon Associates. Traffic basically all organic. 44% uh, US. That seems very low, 8% Philippines, 7% UK. I'd be very curious to see why they're only getting 44% from the United States. The seller spends an average of 10 hours per week writing or updating content. Okay, so there's seemingly no budget for written content in that checking email, responding to comments, updating plugins, deleting spam, typical WordPress blog owner stuff. The seller created most of the content with the exception of 10 articles that were purchased in 2021. So this might be like the other one where you get very high value content. Opportunities for growth include updating older affiliate articles, editing and publishing drafts of articles the seller has written, writing more articles, promoting products with higher commission rates. The seller acquired another website in the same niche and redirected it to the primary domain, okay? So you definitely wanna check out what was on that other website that they acquired. The domain and all articles will be included in the sale. So you have two domains you really need to check here to make sure there's nothing spammy going on with them. The seller owns several other websites and related niches the seller is willing to not publish any competing content or remove all articles related to this niche so you'd want to definitely do some due diligence into what the seller has i, I would say in the online space particularly in technology it probably isn't going to be a problem but you want to make sure that he's not covering the same the exact same type of products you are but it, granted in the online space probably not going to be a problem i wouldn't i wouldn't let that dissuade me but i would definitely want to know what the seller owns and what he's up to and make sure that there's no direct overlap on this otherwise this listing is pretty broad i'd like to kind of know more of the specific product that it's about but it doesn't give us that insight let's go on to the next one Finally, we have this one, Culinary Kitchenware, 137,000, listing multiple 41X, so that means it's making a monthly net profit of $3,355 on revenue of $15,576. Uh, okay, so obviously we noticed their margin is much lower than the other two sites we looked at, and well, that's because they are a e-commerce business or Amazon FBA business. The listing is for an Amazon FBA business created in June 2015 in the culinary and kitchenware niches. Included with the Amazon Seller Central account are 74 SKUs, 
For kitchenware and baking equipment, the best-selling SKU has a 4.6 star rating and has earned an Amazon's Choice badge. Okay, that's pretty interesting. The trademarked business has strong reviews across the best-selling products and require minimal effort from the seller to maintain. The business uses three suppliers based in China. Inventory was previously shipped directly to Amazon, but due to the recent Amazon inventory limits, it is now shipped to the seller's self-storage unit in Seattle before being drip-fed to Amazon as needed. The seller spends around three hours per week on the business, managing inventory, shipping, growth opportunities for the buyer include creating new variations of popular SKUs, optimizing PPC and ad campaigns, expanding to other marketplaces and applying for Amazon brand registry. Okay. So yeah, with a, you know, as with his, as with any Amazon FBA business, one of the big tricks to making this succeed going forward is going to be getting the business off of Amazon. And I don't know why so many people start and build Amazon FBA businesses. It's just not a space I'm very familiar with in the online business world. But uh, I think it's universally agreeable that the best thing you can do for an Amazon FBA business is to get yourself away from Amazon so you're not dependent on them for your entire business. Uh, it sounds like they've got one product of 64 that is really the big, or of 74 that's really the best seller. So 74 does kind of seem like a lot. And with this concentrated or this low of a revenue, where's the revenue? There's the revenue. So one 15,000 times 12 is going to put you at roughly $330,000 in revenue for a year. I guess that's not so bad with 74 SKUs, but it still seems a little low, right? Like maybe you could cut out 64 SKUs and do $300,000. Now you've only got 10 SKUs you can focus on and really drive sales for. And then you can get that revenue up to 500,000. Now 500,000 with 10 SKUs, then you got a nice nice little business. This is obviously a nice little business for someone, but you had a nicer business. I don't like the fact that inventory is kept in a storage unit. So that means you kind of have to be wherever this thing is, or you have to have a place to drag your inventory around in. So yeah, it doesn't really allow the flexibility of an online business. Now you could put this in, I guess you could either do like a 3PL type of situation, or you could do something like a three, I guess it'd be a 3PL that just forwards it on to Amazon. Actually, you know what? I know there are Amazon prep businesses, right? So like your inventory gets shipped to them. They prep it and put whatever details Amazon needs on it and package it according to how Amazon wants you to package it or whatever. And then they forward it on to Amazon. So your stuff comes in, it stays at this place for like two days, then it goes on to Amazon. You could use one of those, but again, you're going to, you're going to take a haircut into your actually monthly net profit, right? Like if you say that the 3PL, and I don't know exactly what they charge, but let's just assume that the number is gonna be 10% of revenue, 33,000. If you're getting 330,000 annual revenue, you know, out of this monthly net profit here, right? And you're basically at this point making 39,000 a year that basically eats up your monthly net profit. Uh, so they're probably not big enough to really do much with 3PL at this revenue, which is why they found it more economical to put it in a storage unit for a hundred bucks a month, probably, and then deal with it themselves. So guys, that's a wrap on this one. These are the Empire Flipper listings that I found interesting this week. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Of course, if you have any questions, uh, you can go on to Empire Flippers yourself and well, unlock the listing, buy it now or submit an offer. I'm signing off on this one.